welcome to another episode of the Fashion Grunge Podcast. I am your host, Lauren. And I'm Joy. What's up, everybody? I am so excited to talk about the film The Doom Generation by Greg Araki from 1995. And Araki is one of my favorite directors ever in the world. And then this morning, when I was thinking, I was like, oh shit, what if Jai doesn't like this? Because it could be another like SLC punk where like I thought she'd really like it. And then she's like, eh, it wasn't really my thing. Because I was like, oh my god, there's so many more movies I want to talk about that Araki did. So I'm excited to hear. I want to hear your thoughts about it. Um, okay. I absolutely love this film. I, I think it, okay, I have like one long word for it. Sexy, oh, okay. sexy, real stylish, ultra gruesome. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I honestly did not expect to like it as much. Um, I'm excited that you did. Yeah. It's so West Coast too. Like the, just their dialogue is very 90s West Coast and very L.A., like, just the way a lot of the things that Rose McGowan says, it's very much, like, a caricature of, like, that valley girl kind of speak and, like, dialogue from that time, which is cool that you liked it. Yeah, I, I think it's because it's so different. Maybe that's why. Like, yeah, it's, um, it is. I don't know. Like, it's kind of insane that I never... I, I hear of it. I knew that... I knew what it was about, but I never watched it. And, um... I, yeah, I just really like it. It's uh, wow. visually I'm really... So- fucking cool i'm so excited well this movie for me is god i mean this araki this director greg araki definitely influenced me in wanting to move to california and definitely made me super obsessed with california as a whole when i was a teenager and i definitely think it's because of this well not this movie actually i rented a movie called nowhere which is came out in 97 which we'll definitely review because almost everyone in there is ridiculously famous now and um, it has a massive cast. James Duvall is in a lot of his films. So James Duvall is also in um, in Nowhere. And his girlfriend in Nowhere is Rachel True from The Craft. Oh, okay. It's really cool. Isn't that um, the third one of this trilogy? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. This is the third of this. It's called the Teenage Apocalypse Trilogy. The first one is... The first film is called Totally Fucked Up. It's really weird because that one is like... It's like his first film. So it's very like camcorder. There was no crew. Like he shot it himself. That one I think is like 93, I want to say. And um, it's very, very different. But it still has the same kind of like teenage nihilist LA kind of quality to it and like weird sci-fi and then um this film came out in 95 and i remember when i saw when i after i saw nowhere and then i like rent i heard about this one i rented this one i was like holy shit like just that like all of his films are like this they're like the colors the vibe the fucking interiors like and his the cinematography just gets like on a much more massive scale as his works go forward because he obviously became more well known he did a great episode of the show riverdale and it's really cool because I heard that Greg Araki was going to do a Riverdale episode. And I was like, what? No way. And then when you watch it, like, it's Araki. It's really fucking cool. Like, he has this complete style and this total everything. And he also did a fashion film for Kenzo. Oh, that um, really makes sense. Yeah, I can see two it. Two or three yeah. years ago. And that is actually directly from Nowhere, oh, which cool. we're going to watch, Jai, for sure. And we're definitely going to review because, I mean, we can review it next week because it's... It's you're gonna be in this Iraqi world. I think you should probably like nowhere is the film. That yeah, no, I, I, I actually obsessed with reading about this film. Like I, I came across with that right. That is a uh, part of a trilogy. So like, mm-hmm. I definitely want to watch nowhere even before like. Well, as soon as I finished this, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, yeah, I definitely want to watch the first and third. Yeah. It's really cool. The first one, I I mean, I like it for the fact that it's, like, very lo-fi, and you can just see the beginnings of, like, how he's gonna structure, like, stories in the future and, like, work. But it's obviously not as refined as, like, Doom Generation seemed more like it had a definite plot and kind of, like, theme and story going through, like, a film, you know, like a feature film. And then Nowhere really ratchets up and then he mysterious skins another great one from 04 with joseph gordon levitt and brady corbett and uh michelle trachtenberg and that one is like oh my gosh that film's it's incredibly emotional and moving but it's so incredible and then he did white bird in a blizzard with uh shailene woodley and like ava green yeah and, so i yeah, actually Tricky. haven't seen any of his films oh wow okay yeah. this is gonna be cool yeah because you're gonna see like 
how he kind of works out his world into these like more commercial films. It's really cool. I, I yeah, I love him. It, it feels <laughs> that by by what I read, like um, and checking out his other projects, it feels like he's very like like an indie director and like yeah. he hasn't done I think he's doing a show right he's doing a he like, did now apocalypse film. it got cancelled though oh he got cancelled okay. yeah it was on stars I watched like the first three episodes but then I didn't have stars anymore like I had a trial but yeah it out. just feels that like when directors do I feel like it's cool the fact that he wanted to remain indie and like not be like a sellout you know mm-hmm. so like you can see that the films he's done are not like blockbusters and like he didn't I just think it's cool when when I mean any sort of artist remains kind of like I don't know true to who they are and yeah. they don't become like sellouts basically even, yeah totally yeah this I, I is, respect that I think yeah cool this is like totally my I want to say like my my little like corner of cinema when I was like uh, 15, 16 and like used to rent videos and stuff and watch them at home was, was Larry Clark and Greg Rocky. Like those were the two directors that I was like, wow, these are both like nothing I've ever seen before. Like nothing that's in a theater, nothing that you ever see promoted in magazines or anything like that. And then they're both just, they both just have such a different perspective, but on this like teenage genre but on this, like, Larry Clark is more, like, real East Coast, like, raw storytelling and, like, shocking, but it's real. And then Araki kind of tells it in this, like, fantasy world, but it's still real. And then there's, like, this kind of weird, like, nihilist, like, reality, like, existential, like, questioning your life, which Araki has in a lot of his films. He's very, like, like the characters are very introspective, and a lot of them are always thinking of, like, why are we here and like what is reality what is not and all this kind of all this kind of stuff which actually filters down into like almost everything that he does but it's really cool that that i'm so glad that you like it cause yeah i feel uh that gray Araki as well as uh, larry clark are pretty much inspired by youth culture you know but like mm-hmm. not not like preppy middle class it's more like the underdog kind of thing i don't yeah. know like it's just different. It's more like the alternative kind of um, crowd, I yeah, suppose, totally. You know, which is yeah, it's super cool. It's really cool. But um, I have some behind the scenes and director's info. We talked about it a little bit that um, this is the second film in the Teenage Apocalypse trilogy. It's really hard to find this film, unfortunately. I I think you can uh maybe stream it there might be a way to rent it somewhere but i know it used to be on netflix like years ago like really long time ago because i remember watching it on there and i was like what they have this on here and then it hasn't been on there since uh kids i think was also on netflix a really long time ago too like like years like five plus years ago and then it like you know or, or like amazon or something and then it's like not been on since but uh this uh and same with nowhere nowhere is like impossible to find like they never made a region one do you have it yeah i have the, a computer file yeah. would you send it to me <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah cool. that's how we're gonna watch it yeah i had it from like years ago i don't know how i have no idea how it's just you know i have it but i have the tape I bought the tape, like, the VHS, so I have that. Oh, I mean, I'll never get rid of that, because the cover is so cool. Um, but that one has, yeah, we're going to we're gonna do Nowhere next week, so <laughs> newsflash. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're gonna cool. Do, we're going to do Nowhere next week. We're going to do a little, like, Iraqi, um, I guess, uh, block here. Uh, the budget for this film was $800,000, which is so crazy to think that, like, that's cool. I feel like that's not that much. That is know? not that much at all. Yeah. I like, actually don't know any other film that, like... Yeah, that's been under a million. I don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then this was shot during January of 94, and it's mostly at night. And this, I mean, there are some scenes in the day, but it's mostly was shot at night. And the budget for this film allowed him to hire a crew because on the previous film, he filmed it himself. So this is the first film that he had where it was more like, this is more of like a bigger feature. And then it was premiered at several film festivals. Some people walked out. (laughs) when yeah, it was on I read and that then, so yeah and then it's so nuts and then some people like compare like favorably I think compared it to Natural Born Killers and then some people unfavorably compared it to Natural yeah it de- definitely did remind me of that film but not mm-hmm. but mean, not really not really but th- I guess there are certain aspects of it or like scenes I suppose you know but mm-hmm. but yeah I mean it's not I can see the influence I, I, I guess like a tiny bit 
Yeah, um, no, totally, yeah. But it's definitely not that bad for people to walk out. That's insane. Yeah, I didn't... I definitely don't... I mean, it's definitely, like, pretty weird. But I feel like if you're at a film festival, I mean, what are you kind of expecting? Are you expecting to see, like, something that's pretty normal? Or, like, I mean, I, I kind of don't think this is that crazy. Like, where you would, like, walk out. Like, it's not... Well, it's not because we... I mean, I mean because we've seen... We, we've seen worse, like, we've seen more well, yeah, violence I guess, yeah. now, right? But I suppose back then, it was just it very different, like, and I guess people were like, what is this, you know? Yeah, like, but now, if that film true. was to come out now, people, I mean, it's nothing compared to those horror films that are not even horror. They're mostly just, um, I don't know, like, I hate those, like, uh, is it called Hostel? And, like, oh, all those God. movies? I see, yeah, I saw the first Hostel. Like, me too. That's kind of scary, to be honest. Yeah, I was like, like, oh, my saw, God, I never we're traveling saw. around Europe. I'm like, this is... Yeah, I mean, of course that's what, what happens. happens. <laughs> yeah, of course that's what happens to you. But... Um, Same with Saw, I think, too. I've never seen Saw, and I, like, don't want to see it. I watched like, the first a bunch of one. Them. But that's what I mean. They're not... It's just, like pure shocking not even shocking value it's just like disgusting it's like not gore. really this yeah exactly so yeah. um but i can imagine at the time people were like oh this is like because i read that some some people thought it was really tasteless and like, oh it is kind of gory it. in like a cheesy campy way yeah <laughs> like i mean yeah but a lot of his films are I mean, a lot of his films are kind of like they are extremely campy and like, is he um is he like half Japanese or like Japanese mm-hmm. background yeah I think. yeah mm-hmm. you sort of see like uh, a bit of that influence in like when when they are at the shop like and the mart that quirky mart place I suppose yeah I, suppose, I don't know but they they basically got to the shop to buy hot dogs and drinks mm-hmm. and then they are three sort of like Japanese kids and the wife mm-hmm. like the mom right and then I feel like visually and just that sequence is very much like Japanese you know yeah mm-hmm. even like the way uh, it was shot yeah like the kids exactly turn. it's just yeah, very much like that. yeah which I love I, I mm-hmm. really like that yeah I like a lot of his camera angles and like what like how like what he chooses to focus on too yeah. which is cool like just even in like, in the food, like, even in the, the convenience store and, like, the close-up of the food and, like, all the, like, the color of the slushy and, like, all that stuff. That's, like, very, like... Like, he's all these clues of, like, colors everywhere. It's yeah. very much, like, yeah, it's, like, these certain themes that go through. It's kind of cool. I like him. I think he's so cool. <laughs> I think he's, like, the coolest director ever. No, he... Yeah, I... I... I mean, he was quite young, I suppose. How old was he when he shot it? Um, let's see. I believe he's... Hey, we're super original here, folks. I am looking this up as we go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, he was... He's 60. Wow. He literally is going to be 61 this year. Oh, wow. So, you, I guess he must have been about... Well, I guess he was about 30, what? No. Who? Four? We're yeah, really but that's horrible. pretty young, you know? Yeah. It's not, yeah, because Larry Clark shot kids at, I think, 50. Yeah, he was quite old. Yeah, so, like, that's pretty fucking cool. And he's managed to, you know, he's still doing shit. Uh, the Living End is another really great one. That's, like, I think his very first one. That one's kind of kind of strange, but it's cool. It's really cool. It's another, like, L.A. L.A. is always, like, the where it is. It's always L.A. Like everything he does it's like really cool oh except for mysterious skin is not because that's based on a book but but most of the other things that he writes are always in la it's like very much his his vibe do you have any other behind the scenes info um i i have i i actually did find some some stuff Ooh, so yeah um yeah he didn't intend to make a trilogy but because he met he um jimmy in the first one i think it was Oh, yeah, James Duvall. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think, yeah, after meeting him, like, he was very inspired, and so he, like, decided to I write. I 
love I James love Duvall. I yeah, mean, I, I knew you were gonna say that. Oh, uh, I love James Duvall. I love, I love, I do love Jonathan Shuck. I mean, holy fucking hell! Oh my but god! But I mean, well, I mean, when two of them together in a movie, it's like kind of. It's kind of hard to... I was like, Rose McGowan has the best of both worlds right here. Like, this is... Minus the murder. Like, this is fucking it. <laughs> like, this is fucking it. She's, like, got the best of both worlds. She has, like, this insane sociopath who probably should be in jail. I mean, not probably. Yes, should be in jail. Is probably, like, an insanely better lay than fucking Duvall over there acting like an eight-year-old playing with, like, yo-yos. But guess what? <laughs> he likes her and, like, is obsessed with her in this weird way. He's super sweet. Yeah, yeah. but he's, like, like, super sweet, but he's a fucking man child. He's a man child. I mean, he just is. Like, but he's so sweet and cute, you know? Yeah, the other one's gonna end up getting killed eventually. I mean, he's just too wild. You know, he's just like, he just is like, every girl knows someone like that. I mean, you know, like, can we talk about him? But anyway, let me just, <laughs> we can talk about him um, after. Let me just um, tell you what I found. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what did you find out? Because uh, he's so distracting, it's just how hot he is. I'm like, oh god. Like, <laughs> However, he did not age well. Yeah, no. I, I was looking at pictures of him now. I'm like, wow. He's from around he here. Well? He's from around. here. Yeah. Really? Edgewood, like outside of Baltimore, yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the other thing I found was that Rose, um, the actress, was discovered by Araki outside a gym. In LA. Oh, nice. Yeah, and the only reason why she accepted is because she needed the money. Oh, and wow. she just basically didn't have money to pay the rent. So she was like, yeah, I just, um, I think she comes from a quite troubled background. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. She was homeless when she was 13. And so she was basically just doing anything just to like get by. Weren't her thing. parents in that weird cult? I don't know. Really? I, yeah, yeah. I think like when she was born or something. Oh, wow. Um, I think I've, I've read that. I'll look it up. Yeah, keep going. I'll, and I'll you know. I'm... And also that when the movie came out, she didn't want her dad to watch it because obviously, you know, like, it, I, I suppose it's obvious. It was, <laughs> but, yeah, it is. But, um, but her dad watched it and he was so angry and chased Greg Araki after screening once. Oh my God. And like, he actually said that he wanted to murder him and he was so upset that he didn't even talk to, to his own daughter like for a whole year oh, after, wow. after the film came out. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I know, right? Like, and, and and as an addendum, I just found out her father ran an Italian chapter of Children of God, the same oh no. the same cult that the Phoenix family was oh into, God. which he and his wife were members of until 1978. McGowan spent her early childhood at the group's communes, often traveling through Europe with her parents. Because she was born in Italy, uh, Rose McGowan. But she and came she back looks... here, I think, at 10, I think. Wait, so she, her background is Italian? No, she was born in Italy. She was born, yeah. Yeah, because... they're American. They, they was just, they were for in Italy, because they were just there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess that, you know, it's funny because there are a lot of, like, obviously her and so many other actors around that time that were, that sort of grew up in, like, um, what do you call it, commune and stuff. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I guess... 70s. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense because her parents were around like 60s, 70s, you know, so that was like a thing. <laughs> but it's so weird that, that the dad would be like that angry if they were like from this kind of like free, I don't know if it was, I don't know how they're their children of god is like yeah, i just know the horrible yeah. stories but i don't i'm thinking of like a hippie commune where it's like free love you know whatever like she's a grown person she's not she yeah, wasn't like I underage mean, but maybe, maybe it's just was, because i don't know like it's just weird maybe she was quite young and to be honest i did not check out how old she was when she filmed it but yeah but uh 94 let's 94, say it was filmed yeah. in 94 she was born oh she was 21 she's born in 73 okay that's not that young, yeah so yeah but. she's 21 um, so yeah, that and another thing that I came across was that the first day of basically they thought that or they felt that the movie was sort of doomed because the first day of dailies got ruined and they had to reshoot it and they had to reshoot it and then um, there was an earthquake. <gasps> which is crazy. Oh yeah, so, the Northridge quake. Yeah, oh, there was yeah. an earthquake and apparently there were in a car and like 
after the earthquake, like for the next few hours, there will be like I think they were filming somewhere out in the, in the mountains, like oh, somewhere there, no and there will be like just rocks like falling down, and, and like they just kept saying to each other, like the actors were like, "We're gonna be okay," but they felt that just because of the name of the f- of the film, they were the well, basically the director said like, "I feel like we." you know, I brought this to myself because I called the film The Doom Generation. And so, like, bad things were, you know, meant to happen, sort of thing. Oh, wow. That's yeah. crazy. I That's know. That's really cool, though. That's really, I mean, not cool, but it's just crazy. Yeah, That's I don't really know how crazy. I found that, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, I was like, damn, you <laughs> deep dive. That's cool. I was like, good, I'm, I'm not the only one. <laughs> I was like, I want to find out something new. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, um, yeah, and then, of course, we went on, like, a weird tangent about, um, about, Jonathan Sheck or Xavier. Um, but I have, as far as the plot points in the story, like, what do you think about Amy and Jordan? Like when we first meet them? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the, right at the beginning, obviously you see that together, but he, I thought he was just like a pushover basically. Mm-hmm. So Amy's quite strong. Um, she can't wear the pants in the relationship and, I mean, I, I feel like as the film progresses, like you just think he's just really sweet and sort of uh-huh. naive, and he's totally like, like in love us. with with Amy, you know. But mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, like, I actually really like him in the film, but I feel he gets totally overshadowed by um, by Jonathan. Oh yeah, as far as the men goes, I think she definitely. Oh yeah, no, I mean she steals the show. Yeah, she's, she's fucking definitely insane. Like, so cool. I just love all of her random, yeah, I just love all of her random sayings. Like, she just has so many, like, really amazing quotes. I think I posted, like, a few on Instagram, but I think my favorite one of the entire thing is, like, you're, like, a life support system Oh, no, that's (laughs) my favorite line. Oh, damn. I was... (laughs) Oh, damn. Well, I have have more, but I mean... Okay. Well, that is my my ultimate. That is my fucking favorite (laughs) line. You're, like, a life support system. Because that is literally (laughs) what the fuck he is. That is literally what the fuck he is. Like, he is like, I need nothing more from you. Like, you are just completely out of control and insane. And it just is the perfect way to describe him. Yeah. <laughs> like, it really is. No, it really is. I mean, I, I think the plot is a bit nuts to me. You know, like, basically everyone mistakes Amy for their ex and wants mm-hmm. to kill her. But, I mean... That's basically it. That's basically the whole movie, right? Yeah. But and then, like, she... random people getting killed, like, by Xavier, like, yes. throughout. <laughs> exactly. And um, I feel that Amy, I mean, she is sort of, like, mesmerizing. Like, I love her character. And, like, mm-hmm. her acting is just so great. But she mm-hmm. also, like, looks very sexy. Like, she's just incredible. I mean, honestly, girl crush, you know, she's like yeah. my new girl crush. In that I know. I really wanted, I was telling you, I really wanted to do a shoot inspired by the doom generation, like so bad. Cause her outfits are just like, they're just so killer. Oh yeah. They're they so are. killer. Like they're so simple and like, they're just so nineties, like that baby doll black dress that she has. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's in my cool. fashion. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say like, yeah, I have a whole fashion. Story, I mean, I but. think, but yeah yeah really obviously cool. she looks incredible but also she has like an amazing figure and also it's the attitude right because yeah. she's like perfect red lips always mm-hmm. even like when she wakes up in the morning and yeah she's like smoking <laughs> she's very sharp and like never Her eats cool. and only drinks diet coke mm-hmm. you know I, I just love that a diet and coke nachos. extra large you know <laughs> yeah I um, like, oh man I love the drive through sequence when they go to the drive through that has that weird like dinosaur ordering speaker yeah with the little cow in it that moves and what they order is like so weird it's like I want barbecue like I don't like, get any of what they mean I'm yeah like, it's all like weird no it's all like just weird bullshit like it's all just like this weird shit that you're like what like and it's like, like the guy's wearing a weird hat and like outfit and it looks all trippy as fuck and they're just like then he pulls out the shotgun and he's like you're my ex-girlfriend like you said you and you're like what like this is crazy <laughs> this movie is like, crazy i know um it's yeah and all the totals are six 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 
that oh gosh i know that's in my notes too like yeah it's like everywhere they go they order all this um, um, crazy amount of food and the total only comes to like 666 mm -hmm. and it's like okay come on you know i but, know it's so cool um but yeah like i think the plot is kind of crazy but obviously those three actors are like just so great and yeah feel, they feel good together yeah i mean i feel definitely think um james duval is like meant to be this really sweet boy mm -hmm. and he's cool but yeah his character just gets overshadowed by um jonathan and like who is a total babe i mean like yeah it's kind of he like is just <laughs> he he is like so hot but he's equally disgusting yeah, he like, is. He's so gross. He like, is. He's so gross. Like, when... Okay. When he is watching Amy and X in the bathroom having sex, mm -hmm. and he's basically... I mean, I'm going to call it coconut cream, okay? Oh, but I don't want to say what it is. So gross. And he has his coconut cream on his hand. I can't believe that that's what you're calling it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I remember when I watched it and I like kind of forgot about it because I don't want to remember that scene and I was like, oh god, Jai's gonna be like, Lauren, what the fuck? I know. What the fuck so... are you having me watch? Like, I we know. Be nowhere. This like, happened whoa. with my high school friends. They were like, I was like, hey guys, I found this new video. Like, let's watch it at my friend's house. And they were like, Lauren, you're into some weird shit. <laughs> they were all like, you like some weird shit, man. Like, I don't even want to know what you're up to when we're not around. I was like, yeah, I have, like, a double life. You just never know. Like, this is some weird shit. They're like, and it's weird because all these actors are, like, people that we know now. So, like, I can't believe they all did this. I and know. I was like, yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> and I and also, it. the thing about him is that I never saw, like... Okay, I don't think I ever watched anything with him before that movie that he did about, like... I don't think it's the Beach Boys, but it's kind of like a... Oh. Band in the sixties. Um, isn't that the one? Not is not how to make an American quilt. Is it the the one with Joaquin? Yeah. It, oh, isn't but, Joaquin in it? Do you know what I mean? It's like a band. Yeah, no, like, I do know what you're talking about. And it about. is very bitch boy sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna and he looks super. That thing like, you do. That thing you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't so, think it's not. I don't think Joaquin's in that. No, Joaquin's no, in a not, different film. Yeah, Joaquin's in a different not. one. Um, so with, well, Joaquin's in a different one with Liv Tyler. It's because Liv Tyler is in that thing you do. And yeah. I, and they're both in another So movie. that's the first film I watched with that oh, actor. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Exactly. So I had no idea that he, like, he could look that hot with like long oh, hair yeah. and like... Like not showering for like... Tattoos and like... I mean, yeah, he's just insane. I mean, was he... Did I imagine this or... He was a model before. Yeah, I think he was a model. Yeah, I think he did modeling for a few years. Yeah. Um, and then like Calvin also... Klein type shit. He looks very like like Antonio Sabato Jr. Do you remember him? Yeah. He was like a Calvin Klein model. He looks very much like that. Oh, yeah, that's exactly like, how he started. Yeah, yeah like, like during that like age of Calvin Klein, like underwear models and stuff. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, total, like, definitely. He's just really hot. He's like four alarm fire, like... He's just super hot. I mean, on purpose. He is. But like, you know, like, when he... <laughs> there's another really gross scene where... Um, when they are in the car, and he says... Kind of, like, implies that Amy had sex with him, right? Mm-hmm. And, and she's like, shut up! You know, he's like, yeah, she did. And, like, basically, she... <laughs> he asked... Um, Jordan to smell his fingers. Like, I know. Smell it. Smell it. it smells like your girlfriend's whatever. You know. <laughs> it's so, so filthy. Gross. So filthy. It was so gross. My one of my favorite. It's not necessarily like my favorite scene, but I love when he's. <laughs> I love when he's asking Rose McGowan to like describe um Jordan's dick, and he's like, does it go to the left? Does it go to the right? Does it like do this? And she's just like laughing at him, and he's like, la he's like literally making fun of him because he knows he's just like such kind of like. Oh, like not like not a guy like him, you know. No, but then it's so weird. Naive. They have this weird like sexual tension thing well, that throughout like the entire film. They're like very very close. Like that's definitely a theme in Iraqi's work. Um, but uh, it's yeah, it's really interesting too. Yeah, I mean, I love the sexual tension that there is between Amy and X, but 
but then w only when when Jordan and X are alone, mm -hmm. then there seems to be a tension too. But yeah, but not really at any other time. You know, it's, no. it's mostly just like Amy. I love it when um when they first meet him and she's like. I hate you, la la la, and he's like, "You're giving me an erection." Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's just so like, I mean, so yeah. Crazy. He's um, probably the type of guy that you and I probably liked in like ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand and five, even through like two thousand twelve. Oh right, uh, fourteen. Yeah, my he's kind 14. of improved in like two thousand and twelve, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like. Uh, mine has not, so, uh, I'm still, like, open season for a fucking weirdo. Uh, who knows, man. Uh, definitely not this guy, though. Do not, if you are anything like this, do not call me at all. Um, it's, like, too much. I, I can't handle that. I'm not, like, 23. Uh, but, you know, the world could be ending soon, so, you know, maybe fuck it. Who knows? You know, like... Who the hell knows what's gonna happen even like in an hour? I feel like it's just like, like especially right it's, now. Yeah, it's like day by day at this and point. And especially if you live in the United States, because yeah. obviously, like, I mean, show. I would not be surprised if there is a war. Like, oh god, don't year. say that. Don't say that. Sorry, but I that. mean, really, like, this president is totally gonna get us into one. Don't say that. We positive thinking, man. I can't. Sorry, think about that. it's just really hard when you live here and you're like. Yeah, it is. It really it, is. You know, we live in like some sort of um, episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> Way too long. Like on a constant, like yeah. basically on a <laughs> daily needs, basis. It needs it's to like, end now. It's like time for it to end. I was gonna say this also throughout the film. You see signs of the rapture and apocalypse. Yeah. Like there's always like the rapture's coming, and then I love the signs that are behind like all the the liquor store people or like yeah, the, the one that people. says if you're basically thieves get will be executed. Yeah, like shoplifters will be executed, and then there's one behind the checker who's actually Heidi Fleiss, the famous Hollywood madam. Uh, that's who that is. Who who's like the last checkout? I think the one that. Uh, Jordan goes to and it says like we don't call 911 and just has a gun a picture of like a gun faced out oh like, yeah pointing at you like like we'll just shoot you and then there's another one too but I know there's like the rapture is coming you see them like as a street sign like a road sign and then and then also in the thrift store when they go to the thrift store and like get those awesome fucking outfits that we're about to talk oh about my God. they um it, there's something that says like prepare for the apocalypse in like a yellow ba banner like over it so there that's also in, in nowhere you'll hear a lot of people talk about that kind of stuff too so it's really cool that he's like obsessed with this like apocalypse like shit's getting weird shit's about to end kind of vibe too yeah no i love it it really is just um I mean, everything, like, visually about the film is just, like, great, you know? It's really cool. And the other notable person is Perry Farrell. The uh, lead singer of Jane's Addiction is the checkout, second checkout person at the convenience store with the orange and white striped shirt. I did yep. not recognize him. Yeah, with the shaved head. And then Parker Posey is in the bar, like that silver bar. Oh, yeah, no, that yeah, I did see like, that. Yeah. yeah, and then oh. Parker Posey's there. And then the only other notes I have for the story is, like, Jordan is so childlike, X is the extreme opposite. It's like they're, like, two complete opposite spectrums, and it's really... Like, and it's weird because it seems almost like that Jordan, like, he's so fascinated by X, but he also, like, wants to be him, too. Like, he wants to be more, I think, like, adventurous and, and not so, like, meek and shy. Yeah. Uh, because he I was, like, that, watching them have too. sex. You know, yeah. he wasn't, like, mad that she was sleeping with him. Like, I feel like he was, like, I want to I wanna be, like, this kind of guy. Like, I, maybe I should be this kind of guy. Or he's thinking about X. We don't really know. Is he, like... Because he's very curious. Like, he has, like, definite sense of, like, curiosity. Yeah, I'm... Um, yeah, yeah, you, I get that, too, from, from his character. But, I mean, yeah, opposites attract. So it's no wonder that Amy and, and Jordan are together, you know? Because... Yeah, totally. I feel like bad girls always want to date, like, innocent men that can't, you know... <laughs> Mm -hmm. that they can sort of, um, I don't know, like, be a bad influence and all. Yeah, pretty know. much. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Um, yeah, okay, so mood and fashion. Yeah, Are let's we? talk about the mood. It's LA, mid-90s. It's very, like, apocalyptic at night, kind of weird. 
This is during the AIDS crisis in the very beginning. Remember how Jordan is like when they're like trying to have sex and he's like, I don't want AIDS. And then she's like, but we're both virgins. (laughs) So like AIDS is a thing. Like it's the mid nineties. So like, that's the kind of temper, even though it's kind of like weird that she's like, but we're both virgins. Like kind of funny. Um, and then I love every scene of them inside the car. It's just really cool. And it's just, I love all the nineties West coast dialogue. Like we talked about earlier, like just everything that's super LA. Like when she says, my mom used to be a heroin addict. Now she's a Scientologist. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I was I like, that's that. super LA. Cause like Scientology is like very LA specific, or at least like you hear about it in LA more than anywhere else. Um, yeah, so it's just, like, really cool. What did you think about the mood? Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, the first thing that came to mind was I, I see quite a few references to, like, uh, like other films. Like, mm-hmm. definitely David Lynch, like, Twin Peaks. Yeah, I was going to say mean, the, the way it's shot. Because he has this really unique... Um, well, he, he has this really unique style, but he does really do red and blue a lot mm-hmm. in, he, in in Twin Peaks, you know? And there's that checker floor that's really iconic. Mm-hmm. And they do that in, with that hotel room. I love know? those fucking rooms. The but all even red if, if you check. see, like, a lot of um, all the scenes shot in hotels and when they're driving, it's basically red and blue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it really reminds it reminded me of uh, Twin Peaks and and then like I, I guess like a couple of scenes reminded me of Natural Born Killers in terms of style mm-hmm. like um, X's outfit when he wears the cowboy I know sort of flared uh, trousers cowboy boots hat and and, and belt mm-hmm. and um, I guess it, it's true because it's they both show in LA or no actually no Natural Born Killers was in LA but it, it's kind of like it's got that western sort of yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, totally. um, and it also pop fiction, mainly because yeah. of Amy's um, style, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I that love. super iconic bob, perfect, like, just perfect head, and like, I don't know, I, I, I mean, which is cool, you know? I feel like you could play... He's not actually sort of playing tribute to those films. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely very, it's his own... Yeah, it's definitely yeah, his Yeah, it's own just a thing. bit of an influence, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so really I love cool. I love the mood, and I love that um, the first. I mean, that's in my favorite scenes, but um, they show that cool rave, you know, mm-hmm. and and I feel that. I mean, you and I like. I suppose yep. we're really lucky that we did experience like ra- raves in like yeah. the early two thousands, but we know like nothing beats like mid nineties club scene, you know, yeah. like that's. I mean, if I could yeah. just go back, I mean, I don't care if, you know, if I was, like, 40, I'd still be going to a yeah. rave. Like, oh, yeah, it was, totally. like, 94, 93, you know? Oh, yeah, I would totally... And, like, people would go of different ages. Like, I would see people who were way older than I was. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah, same. so it's, like, people just love the music and love the, the like, energy and vibe. There's nothing like it. I mean, there's, there's nowhere like else it. to go, you know? If you want to yeah. listen to that kind of music. Like, I mean, because before... It? That's when, like, the whole, like, warehouse... Um, kind of rave started mm-hmm. really in like the early 90s sort of thing and then it obviously became more popular and stuff but um even yeah, in 2000 totally. there was still some but I mean yeah I just I love that I love that you get to see a bit of like the club scene um even though Amy seems to think it's really fucking boring and she's like can we go <laughs> yeah I know she's like let's get out of here I know um, so funny but that's cool. Yeah, I have. But be- before we get to the fashion, sure. I won't because that's going to be a longer segment. I want to talk about how this is another big reason why I love Gregor Rocky is his fucking soundtracks. Yes, are incredible throughout all of his films, but specifically this one. He loves shoegaze, as you can tell. Loves some curve. Loves some lush. Jesus and Mary Chain. Yep. Loves some. Um. Loves some fucking industrial too, which is amazing. Nine Inch Nails. Um, and it's all just goes so perfectly with the, um, and on the Cocteau twins, I think too, but it goes so perfectly with the story, like when oh, yeah. it mixes Absolutely. metal and like shoegaze and I, I love it. I, I found a lot of bands through like his soundtracks being really young. I was like, Oh, I love this. And it's a great whole song on, on the nowhere soundtrack. Oh, cool. um, and are awesome. Uh, I believe like chemical brothers and, uh, I think Radiohead. 
think there's a Radiohead song on the Nowhere soundtrack. Oh, really? You're gonna fucking love Nowhere, Di. I, I, I just, I can't, because it's, it's just, there's so many people in it that you're gonna know, and it's gonna trip you the fuck out. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so it's yeah. gonna be cool, yeah. No, what feel, did you think about the music? Yeah, I feel, it's definitely one of the reasons why I like the film so much, because you can see when a director is, like, thoroughly, like, into music and really mm-hmm. inspired by it and it's part of um, their work, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know whether it was before or after the, the movie, but he apparently worked as a music critic in L.A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so- and he has a really cool YouTube video at Amoeba, that big record store that sadly is no, no longer there. They moved. Oh, okay. um, and he talks about, like, his music choices and he has, like, the sickest taste in music. Like, Yeah, you can, you can totally see that. Yeah. Like... I I love that first song, the intro song when they're at the club, mm-hmm. um, and and yeah, like, they have like two slow dive songs there, mm-hmm. and like, um, there's a band actually that I really love. It's like really kind of old. I mean, old like eighties, like uh, Wolfgang Press. They oh, yeah. they're a British band. And it's very kind of mm-hmm. like post punk, um, but they do ma- like this amazing song. Well, actually, they have this really cool song called Christianity, but they do a remix, and that's what they use in the soundtrack. It's a remix by someone else. I can't remember who, but... Yeah, yeah, I like that song. But the original is not like that at all. Oh, wow. It's just this one is a bit more electronic sort of thing. Um, And my favorite song is Love and Rocket. I know. Yeah. That song, it's just a tune. Like, I love it. Yeah. And this is the thing, I, I feel like, I haven't really, well, besides the obvious, like, train spotting and all of that, like, mm-hmm. um, not many indie films have electronic songs. It's yeah. mostly, like, rock and, like, yeah. you, I feel like this is the other thing, right? Nine, Nine Inch Nails, like, literally have songs in, in, in all the 90s films that are, yeah, like, indie, they do. you know? Uh-huh. It's really crazy. It's really cool. It, you know, it's really cool, but it's kind of funny at the same time, you know? And so um, does uh, Marilyn Manson's on the soundtrack uh, of Nowhere. Oh, okay. That's cool. a good remix, yeah. And, like, Chuck D. <laughs> it's really weird. It's really, really yeah, cool, Yeah, no, I totally love the soundtrack. I, I actually been listening to it since yesterday. Like, Oh, nice. Like, I figured, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, if Jai does not like this, I don't know what she's going to like. It's no, got no, a no, sick I, soundtrack. I and, like, I was like, um, she knows the people in it. It's gonna be, I'm so excited that you like it. I'm still really excited. Oh, yeah. Like, I love, I love stuff like, you know, like, Raw? the mm-hmm. movie yeah. I, I freaking love that and it really yeah, that it's, one's it's, good. Very, it's very different to this but it really reminds me of it in terms of style like yeah. you know it's kind of like graphic a bit gory but like it's upsetting. so fucking good yeah you know? it's true uh, just like uh, okay now let's get into fashion man so okay. you're yeah. the Yay. you're the you're the fashion guru so let me let me hear your thoughts we both are well no but you're the stylist I mean I appreciate it but I could never dress anyone <laughs> Like I don't, I don't think I can start from scratch and have to pull a concept together. I mean, That's I, you. I think I out of all the films that we've done, I'm mm-hmm. so far this. I mean, besides Clueless, but it's very yeah. Different. I was gonna say Clueless, like, yeah, is a little it's different. very like preppy, you know. Cool. Yeah. Um, and they had a I, budget. They had, they had a budget. budget. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, all this, they had a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I I love the fashion in this film so mm-hmm. much, and and you know what's really cool as well to find out that. Obviously, they did have a big budget, but also it was mostly like Amy's clothes. Yeah, like, she actually brought uh-huh. some of her stuff, like the black mini dress with the combat boots. That's yeah, that was like hers. hers. The pink dress. I think that the plastic trench or vinyl, whatever. It's, mm-hmm. It looks like plastic. I don't know. Yeah, um, I think it is. I don't think that's hers. So, I mean, maybe they made it. I don't know. Um, yes, I mean, I love cat eye sun- sunglasses. Like, I, so cool. That's like my favorite shape. Um, the black dress, like, it's just so cool. Like, worn with, you know, it's like, this is what I mean, like, by the power of styling. Like, you could wear the same dress with, like, ugly fucking shoes and it yeah. would look completely different. Like, super slutty, like, cheap. What you if know. she had like vinyl boots on, like white go go boots on, and or she, something like? Well, she I, exactly. She has these like combat boots with socks, and then her Dots. black. Woo. Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, yeah they, they must are. Be, right? Yeah, because yeah. they close up when she when she puts her cigarette out in the convenience store. You actually yeah. see the front like stitching, and you can I tell they're that. hers. Yeah, because they're old. They're like super old. They close up on the front of her shoe, and it's the stitching. Yeah, and, and again, it's like that outfit wouldn't even be the same if she didn't have that bob and like red lipstick mm-hmm. you know like 
it's just like very easy but it's just so well put together um i love what exes wears like he has these like obviously flare trousers and like cowboy shirt hat and belt and it's like on it's button. like the hottest outfit i know he i was like oh, super sexy, this is so bad like, but so yeah. good <laughs> and even even what jordan wears because it's a complete different each of them is very the stripes different. The yes stripes that he i'm gets. obsessed with that top it's very it's cool but it's very juvenile like he, it looks he, very much like a young like a young kid that's how he acts and his pants are like too big they're well, like he looks really, like really a skater sexy. to me that's like yeah, a skater outfit does, yeah. skater's outfit you know yeah, those big pants are. They're totally like '90s skaters, like the Jinkos and stuff. But, but yeah, it just I reminds mean, me that he's a kid when he has that uh, yo-yo. Oh yes, yeah, I feel cute. like he just looks more like a kid when he has like a striped shirt on and like playing with this yo-yo and then you know jerking off outside of a hotel, watching his girlfriend. I know, have sex. you know, regular type shit, like yeah, just, just stuff you do. <laughs> being a fucking weirdo and i love th- there's this really cool t-shirt that x wears um that x wears dare um, dare to keep yeah i have jealous. a dare shirt i think everyone has a dare shirt like, oh really yeah we all had them yeah they gave me in school I oh yeah well it was a program in school that was about oh. like anti-drugs from the 90s they have them a lot in thrift stores but yeah it's a very i have a gray one though i, don't oh, I wish i had one That's yeah you can cool. probably get one you can probably get one at a thrift store or probably ebay i, I bet you can get one on ebay like an original one like it's crazy because they were like super free and like kids wore them all the time in the 90s because they're just like the shirt yes so i must have seen obviously that that slogan somewhere but in 2000 2002 2003 when i lived um i lived with friends and um i I used to make a lot of things like actual Mm -hmm. clothes and i i used to do like prints on t-shirts and stuff i printed that slogan on a tote that i made oh cool yeah and um yeah i was i was into like making customizing things a lot but yeah i must have seen it somewhere but i definitely copied it and, and i had it on on this I, I used to think it was like really funny because obviously everyone in east london at that time was definitely doing drugs i mean probably still now and then i'll be i'll be carrying this like tote that says like keep your kids off drugs you know yeah oh my god yeah, I mean, it's kind of ironic that most people who wear it are, like, adults on drugs. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, like sure. later on, you know, it was, like, when you're stoners and, sh- like, movies and stuff, you'd see people wearing, like, dare shirts, and it was, like, haha, you know? But... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, anyway, I, I think it's the... It's on point, like, the styling and, like... I love the fashion. jewelry. I love the ball chains that, like, everybody had in the 90s. I knew like, you were going to say that. Yeah. And, like, Rose McGowan has one, or Amy. Um, I know X has one. Um, and I think Amy has a ring on hers. She has, she a has ring. quite a few rings. Like Yeah, and I love her rings, too. I wrote yeah, that, like, silver, they're, they're the very colored. Huge. Yeah, she had, like, the green one and the white one. Those plastic. I have some. I still have some like that. I just never wear them anymore. But um, I love that clear coat. I was like, photo shoot. <laughs> I was like, me and Jai wanted to do a, a shoot with like a clear coat I know, it's for sh- like a it's long t- time. I know, it's a shame because they, some high street. Yeah, brand... Zara had that yellow one. Remember that? Yeah, that, but there like, was another. I, I think like Forever 21. I don't know because I saw it online somewhere and it was like $20. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh no, they're like totally like overdoing this trench and it's everywhere now but mm-hmm. i still wish i had bought one just to shoot it you know yeah i was gonna say it's re- it's super cool like I, ha- I have that clear el- um umbrella that like lots of people obviously shoot with but i was like i have to buy one like <laughs> i might need it for some other thing later on so mine are just like oh god x i just wrote like hot uh, hearts <laughs> i wrote like ball chain jeans no shirt <laughs> yes like <laughs> sign me up um, and then I like his post thrift outfit. I I love the western shirt and like so that cool. belt. Um, it's just super cool. I love uh, I love Jordan's too. I love his ministry, his cut off ministry like muscle tee that he's wearing in like the red hotel room when he's sitting in front of the bed and X is like oh, yeah. on the bed and yes, he's watching that, TV. That, is cool, that ministry shirt's pretty dope. And I love his ripped jeans. Like Jordan has some super dope ripped jeans with the ministry shirt. Like you see him sitting on the edge of that bed and they're like. They're really fucking cool. They're just, like, super, like, distressed and frayed and stuff. Um, and then Amy's just, like, the dopest. And then Parker Posey's outfit in that bar was pretty dope. That, like, oh, yeah. horrible uh, horrible wig she had. That, like, <laughs> big, like, frizzy white wig. And then those glasses. They were, like, heart-shaped. And they were pink. Does she, like, does she wear, like, a silver outfit? 
No, it's the pink outfit. Oh, okay. I just remember silver for some reason. Oh, the room is silver. It's all, like, in foil. Oh, that's right. Yeah, like, that bar that, that that they go to, like, that pool bar. Where that guy gets, uh, she stabs him in the dick by accident. Oh, by accident. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that knife is, like, sticking out, and she's like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, my God, that's fucking crazy. But, yeah, that's all I have for fashion. Fashion's, the fashion's so cool. It's so good. I feel like it's so impressive, the things that you can do, like, because they actually don't wear many outfits no. throughout the film. It's pretty much the same ones, but it's And also, like- Amy has that bra on. You know, oh, she yeah. has, like, a bra and just, like, bottoms. That was hers as well, uh-huh. she said. Yeah, yeah, um, that totally looks like hers. And I feel like it's just, like, by just changing um, this, like, her sunnies, it's, it's, it's kind of, like, yeah. to add a bit of a difference, you know, because at some point she's wearing black, sort of square ones, and then she has the white mm-hmm. cut eye ones. And then and X has those black square ones on in the end. Yes. Yeah, and he looks so fucking hot in those. Like, he just looks... Ugh. I love those glasses, too. I, know, I have some really that cool. are like that. I don't wear them anymore. I still have them, though. But... So, I, I actually... Yo, favorite I, scenes. Yeah, do you have any? Yes, I do. But let me just... I, I'm just gonna... I added, like, a bit of a section. Oh, yeah, section, yeah. But I just thought it'd be cool if we do, like, have, like, three or four, like, very, like, 90s things about the films. Oh, yeah, okay. And so I put favorite 90s things... <laughs> 90s Sonny's. moments, new segment. Woo! Yeah. So that like, guys come up with. Okay. 90s um, moments. Cut eye sunglasses, which yes. obviously are fifties, but they obviously came back massively in the nineties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Doritos and the, yeah. and big gulp drink. Yep. Because that's like literally every, in every film in the nineties, everyone is drinking that disgusting thing. That's true. Oh, they're not disgusting. They're amazing. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> they're so good. Okay, for mine, my my super 90s moment was a bit of a... This is an earlier thing I don't think I touched on, or I don't know where I wrote it. Oh, yeah. Um, I This is encapsulates my favorite first favorite scene is the Quickie Mart, which is the first uh, convenience store. Totally 90s moment is it's totally the Smashing Pumpkins video for oh, 1979. That's true. Like, oh, it's totally God. that fucking scene because James Eha is like... That is... is like the checker mm-hmm. like there when they come in and like you know fuck up the place you know it reminds me so much of of uh doom generation yeah you're so right that yeah. is really smashing pumpkins like. and then um ball chain necklaces that would be my 90s moment those mm-hmm. ball chain necklaces the doc martens that she has on and just general smoking <laughs> It's like a 90s thing. <laughs> that is true because now i feel like when they show youth they don't show them smoking anymore but, like, well, back when we were yeah. young, like, I feel like everyone would just smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like, everyone, everyone is weird. afraid of, like, being seen as, like, they're glamorizing smoking yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And, you know. So which, they stay away from it, yeah. I suppose. Oh, cool. All right. Nice. Nice. I'm excited um, to go through and, and now add 90s moments, like, through our through our okay. story here. So, yeah, what are your favorite scenes? My first one was the Cookie Mart scene. I just wrote cinematography, the colors. It's just fucking cool. dope. Yeah, it's cool. What's yeah. yours? Um, the intro scene, like yeah. all red and perfect, decadent nineties club scene, keeps mm-hmm. getting high. Um, I I just love that. It's it's just so cool. It is know? super cool. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, my next one is uh the checkered motel room. I just love that checkered <laughs> motel room, and That's I love. Mine. Is it? Well, well yeah. In in addition to, I also have, and I love the existential discussion of what sex is like. Like, oh, they yeah. describe, like, what it is, and it's very much, like, a stoner conversation. Like, it's very much, like, something that you talk about when you're just, like, really fucking true, stoned, you know? True. And it's, like, this weird existential, like, how you think about how, like, weird it is, like, when you, like, really deeply think about it. I just, I like that, that it was in that room. And I like that the moments that Amy and Jordan have together, because it's very much not a surface relationship. I feel like it's, like, they have a pretty deep, emotional relationship you know oh yeah so they, they've been together for ages three months yeah. <laughs> but they I just sound that was so funny but, but they just sound like they're just like or, or she just like agrees with him and she's just kind of like on this weird plane with him too that's why i like it I like that he's just so weird and so is she i know yeah that is true i mean i feel like they're definitely like considering her character her re- relationship with jordan is very sweet mm-hmm. and like cute you know like mm-hmm. Because she's, like, a wacko. Yeah, totally. (laughs) But, yeah, my favorite is, like, the the threesome in the hotel, which is the Checker Hotel, right? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Um, Which kind of 
It's not a proper threesome because no, it like probably gets interrupted by her saying she needs to pee. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Which is really funny too because I was genuinely thinking, wow, am I going to see like. No, I know. She threesome? says I need to pee, I think, in the warehouse. When they're in that warehouse and they have that, that bed, it's like near the end when the bed's on the floor. That And that's like the proper threesome. That okay, says, well, they're not at the checkered hotel, but I But then, yeah, there is another one they're... in the checkered hotel, though. Yeah, when um, I, I guess Jordan is asleep and X mm-hmm. comes and like they start making out in the bed. Um, yeah. Anyway, what's your next one? My next one is, is literally it says during the threesome, Amy says, shit, I gotta pee. <laughs> And yeah. then I was like, and the end of the film that is so fucking disturbing, but the end of all of Iraqi's films are like this, and they're very, um, they're very, like, hard to watch, but, like, this harsh dose of reality kicks in as well. And I, like, kind of really, I just love the way that it was shot, where it's, like, kind of, like, black and white, and it's not, not black and white, but it's, like, black, like, stop motion, like, almost like a strobe, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, like, you see, like, this horrible, like, Amy getting raped by this group of fucking weirdo, like, neo-Nazis that were, like, you saw them earlier. They thought that she was, like, Bambi when they were in the record store. Mm-hmm. And um, and then, like, they, you know, like, obviously, like, attacked them. And it's, like, this fucking horrible story. It's not really a favorite scene, but this is... I just like the way it was shot, and I like the way he ends his films. And I just love how, like, the very end was just, like, it, it kind of just ends abruptly, this horrible attack, and, like, Jordan's gone, and he's dead. And then you just see them in the car, like, X and Amy, and they're just, like, driving, and they don't say anything, and then he opens, like, the Doritos, and he's like, here. Yeah, so that's actually that scene, the last, not the very last one, but when they're attacked by the neo-Nazis, mm-hmm. that that reminds me of Natural Born Killers. Yeah. Because it's shot in the same sort of abstract way with the mm-hmm. lighting, not really playing with the lighting, right? So you don't really see, like, exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's pretty much like with the lighting, they, they have that effect. So you kind of know what's happening, but you don't, it's not that graphic, which yeah. I quite like. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I actually um, don't have a last favourite scene, but I added worse scenes. I think we should have, like, a worse like oh, worse. oh yeah, that's good. So, nice. okay, so we're I have, evolving. Episode, we're evolving. Episode, what is this? This is probably going to be like twenty two. So it? yeah, well, oh, by wow. the time I release it, because we have some other ones coming okay, up yeah. before, but because uh, I feel like I have way too many like sitting in the bank now. I like want to make them more like relevant, <laughs> so they're not so late. I don't even know. We didn't really do an intro. We didn't talk about what's going on. Oh yeah, knows, we did. Well, we do know funny. when I'm. I didn't know when I was going to post it, so I was like. It's going to be something really dated. Like, I'm going to talk about, like, how crazy this thing is, and it'll come out in, like, a month. And like, we'll be like, oh, what? Like, what are they talking about? But, yeah, okay, let's do a uh, worst scene. What's your worst scene? Well, um... We're just doing one, right? You well, just do one? I'm just having... Uh, I have two. But... Oh, okay. All right. What are your I don't know. I guess I'm just going to say only one, like, in, uh, one sort of thing. Like, what are your worst So, things? when he licks off his coconut cream. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty gross. I have to say that. Because it's just gross. so disgusting. And when they're attacked by the neo-Nazis at yeah. the end. Mm-hmm. Because it's... I mean, just knowing that he's basically being castrated. And then... Yeah. Did they... Did they... Did they... Um, take his penis and put it in his mouth. So. That's what it's meant to happen, yeah, right? I but you don't so. see it. No. But it seems like it. Which is awful. Ugh, I can't. I don't even... Yeah. It's so bad. What it's What so bad. are yours? I would say that those two would definitely be the most distressing scenes of the whole film. Uh, the one where the checkout... The first checkout guy who's killed and is decapitated... The head. And is talking yeah. is pretty oh. fucking bad. Well, because he's fucking puking some green yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is disgusting. I was like, oh, this is so gross. So that, that would be mine. Because I... On the spot, thinking of one. But now I'm excited yeah. I can think of... I can think of some, like, worse scenes. Good one! Two new cool. categories. Two new categories. Yeah, cool. awesome. Man, okay, can, what, what, can what we else have, do you can have? Can we have favorite lines? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, well, there's so many in this one. Like, I think not every film has that many great, like, lines like this, but this one has a lot. What are yours? Well, Clueless has quite a lot. Yeah, well, Clueless has its own, like, definition. It has its own yeah. dictionary in Clueless, like, essentially. So, I mean, yes, there are a lot, but I, I, I think I just wrote down two because I feel like I mean, didn't know. Yeah. Like, um, that you already mentioned one. You're like a life support. 
<laughs> no, life support system for a cog. That would be that. So great. Um, what's yours? I have a lot. Um, I I said the heroin addict one. That that one was one of my it's favorites. My mom one. used yeah, to be a heroin addict. Now she's a Scientologist. Um, I have a lot. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to name this episode because I usually name them a line from the film. So I just have. Uh, I like you're the bright red cherry to- on top of my Sunday. Like she says that. <laughs> and I, I love that. And I also like when she says life is lonely, boring, and dumb. Like, oh, that's yeah. what Amy says. And then I also have, there's a little honorable mention. It's a bumper sticker in Amy's car on the passenger side visor. It says, ditch the bitch, make the switch. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You should call the episode that. No, I don't want to call it that because that's too much, I feel okay, like. Okay, maybe. Yeah, that's too much. Well, you should definitely call it a line, though. Like I am going to call it a line. Yeah, I, I don't know which one, but I am going to call it a line. I like, I mean, this one is kind of like settled, but I like it. Wake up and smell the cappuccino geek. Yeah, I have that one too. And I have, will you take a reality pill? And I have, oh, I, lo- I love and I have, that. And I have, I love you can mean a lot of things. I love when he says that. I love you can mean a lot of oh, things. There's just like, so many. Yeah. I just love, like, how, I just love the dialogue. Like, everything that um, Amy says to X, you know, yeah. it's really, like, it's all like rectal too. She's always like, "Oh, you're such an excrement. Oh, you're such a like shit bird." Like it's always yeah. like has to do with shit. It's so weird. <laughs> he yeah. She says at some point, "And you're and you're ugly. You look like a penis, or yeah. like you're like a penis head or something." I don't yeah. know. It's like I was like, "Oh my god." It's really funny right. because she actually says that a lot of um, that was sort of made up slang that the obviously the director came up with. That's so cool. But she actually didn't know what she was saying until like after the film when like people were talking about it she was like i had no idea i mean some of it you do know but oh, a lot wow. of it she had no idea like of the sexual content that he had and then she was like oh fuck i can't believe that's what i said you know oh like, wow she was quite naive about it i guess that's but- cool that's super cool because i mean she's after this she did scream which was fucking dope so um she's also one of the like the best characters in scream didn't, didn't she date marilyn manson for a while yep she sure did in like 98 99 yeah i, I remember say, around that, that time this is how i think of her i remember that really skimpy outfit that she had at the bmas at an or like dope though yeah. It's amazing. She, she, she <laughs> if I looked insane. like that, I would fucking wear that. I would totally wear that if I looked like that. Like, I'd be yeah. like, fuck it. Like, my fucking boyfriend is Marilyn you Manson. Just, He's so you just good. sort of get the, the impression that um, she's just like a badass. Yeah. You know, like, she seems like an Angelina Jolie, but like totally. more underground. She like, would more totally be into whipping and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, she just seems like she would be. She seems pretty fucking cool. <laughs> like, she, she was in Charmed. Remember she did. She was in Charmed oh, after, after Shannon Doherty. Yeah. Um. So she's yeah. She's like been doing some stuff, doing some stuff around, and now she's like an activist for the Me Too era. So good for her, man. That is cool. Yeah, she's fucking doing it. But we have reached the end of the episode. I know. Yeah. Well, I want to keep was it fun. under. Yeah, it was super cool. I mean, do you have anything else to add? No more comments from me. No more comments from Jai. We're going to actually come back, and the next one is going to be on Nowhere, so I think you cool. fucking love this one. I think that actually might be, like, on YouTube. I think someone's uploaded, like, a full video. So if that's the case, then people can, I think, maybe watch it, which will be really yeah, great. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, until the next one, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.